welcome, Nick Saul and Sarah Liss. Thank you. Thank you. I wanted to start by asking you if you can tell us a bit about the stop, the organization, but also the stop, the book. It uh, chronicles my 14 years working in a very low income community in an organization that was handing out not very healthy food to desperate people. And so it tracks the transformation of the organization, building a place of generosity and connection and relationship building rather than the one-off transaction of the food bank. It's also about uh, social change and the importance of fighting for what you believe in and standing up for what you believe in. I think it's also about uh, the power of food and for us to start thinking about food as a, a public good. And what I mean by that is that when everyone accesses good, sustainable food, everyone benefits. And so rather than viewing food simply as a, as a mere commodity, we need to think of it as something imbued with culture and health and sustainability. And I guess ultimately the book is about um, our collective responsibility to each other. And it's all told beautifully. Uh, my wife, who's sitting right over there on the left, is the co-author, Andrea Curtis. Through uh, not heavy data or heavy theory, it's told through uh, stories, people's stories, uh, that are unvarnished and, and clear. When I got to the stop, it was really my first exposure to, well, food banking. I was overwhelmingly taken aback by the poor quality of, of the food in the organization when I got there in 1998. And so my journey of awakening around food, growing it, cooking it. I always knew the, the pleasure and the joy of commensality and, and eating together. But I was, you know, I ate to go, to get A to B. I wasn't very conscious of these larger implications of the food system and the, and the way food moves from field to table and what that does to our, to our health, our, our collective health and the environment. So that, that's been a fun journey for me as I've been at the stop and now at this new organization. Community Food Centers Canada that is trying to scale what we built at the stop across the country. Well, the first thing that struck me were the lineups. You know, you know when you go by an accident and you slow down and you look at it, it was, it was like people standing in line having to uh, basically check their humanity at the door when you actually looked again at the quality of the food essentially fat, sugar, and salt. The, the dregs of our corporate food system make their way into the food bank world. And so uh, if you were a, a Somali mom that got to the front of the line, you were not getting anything that was representative of your culture. Uh, it was never enough, and the food wasn't healthy. So it was a place that was broken down, uh, trying to work with people that were really struggling to make ends meet. Uh, not through their own faults, not because you know, poverty was a lifestyle choice or a character flaw or about poor budgeting. It was about real issues like lack of good paying jobs, uh, not enough affordable housing, uh, social assistance rates that don't allow people to live with dignity and health. So there were, there were serious difficulties and we weren't, we weren't responding to them. Can you kind of paint a picture of what the stop of today looks like? First of all, there are no, uh, no lineups. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of, of lineups. So if you were someone who was maybe new to the neighborhood, uh, you might find your way there. You don't need to advertise the stop. People know about it in the community by word of mouth. And you might walk in and the first thing you do is sit down to probably one of the best meals you've ever eaten. Because often you probably are coming from a very lonely place, a crappy basement apartment uh, where the walls are pressing in on you. And you walk into a really generous flags from all the different countries that, that represent the people who walk in into the stop. And you sit down and you eat this unbelievable meal and you're like, wow, someone has taken a lot of care in this meal. And I, and I really do believe that when you take care in, in preparing food, uh, it, you're, you are reflected back, you matter when you see that someone has taken that much care to give you good food. And that's often where the journey begins with people. Uh, I really believe that for individual change 
and community change to happen, you need to have a sense of hope and self-worth. Mm -hmm. And I think that's our business. What have been the biggest challenges for you in mm -hmm. taking this model that has worked so well on a hyper-local level um, and kind of transforming it to other hyper-local areas? Sure. Our model is, is a big challenge to that transaction of waiting in line, getting to the front of the line, being handed a, a not very healthy hamper of food and then going home and feeling smaller for that experience. So we are in a very different world in terms of trying to build out these community food centers that are about creating cooks and gardeners and engaged citizens and volunteers and, and all of this energy that I've tried to describe. So, that, that has been a, a challenge to, mm -hmm. to surface a new way of doing, doing things. You can ask some very basic questions about food banks. Do they reduce hunger? Do they improve health? Do they create pathways out of poverty? The answer to all those questions are no. Right. Have you found very much pushback around uh, people who are very protective of the food bank model and the communities you've gone into? Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard. I mean, some people have been working in their food bank for 25 years, and it's hard to hear some of the stuff I've just said, that you know, it's not reducing hunger, it's not improving health, it's not creating pathways out of poverty. That's a tricky thing to hear. And so our message really is we don't want to get into a, into a spat with the food banks. What we're saying is that we, we need to channel that compassion and caring that is embodied in the, in, in the food bank into a more progressive project. And that progressive project we're positing is, is the community food center. So it's a new way of coming at these issues. Like food is this amazing place that if we actually prioritize it and put our tax dollars behind it, we can transform huge, seemingly intractable problems that we have out there. I feel like, you know, obviously in order to, to try and shift the system, you want people to have a, an epiphany similar to what you went through. So I guess I'm wondering in terms of you know, looking just specifically at the model of the stop, what was your aha moment? It was standing right at the front, right at the coal face, having to hand a hamper of food to a mom with three kids and said, see you later, I hope, hope it goes well. And like, that was heartbreaking mm -hmm. and I knew it wasn't uh, acceptable. We started to develop programs that m were more respectful and uh, also recognize the skills that were in our community and we just needed to surface them. And right. so when you do a community kitchen program where people can create a menu, shop for the menu, come together and cook it together, uh, eat it together and walk home with food, that's pretty powerful.